Hello, I am Elisa Hernando. I am the CEO of Red Collector. Welcome to this talk, this art talk that we call it Miércoles de Arte, uh, Wednesday of Art. And we've been doing this talk for the last uh, two years and uh, we like to invite people from uh, the art world like galleries, collectors, artists, advisors. And this time uh, this talk is, we have a very special uh, guest and very good friends as well. And this is good because we are we are joined uh, people from different parts of Europe, which is really cool as well. So uh, we have Adrian Rebouchet. He's a, he's a art advisor uh, from AMA Advisory Service, and as well he's in charge of dealing with the uh, art fair in, in Bordeaux called Bad, which is the first edition. Um, we have as well Michael Jansen, uh, which is a very well known uh, gallery gallerist in Spain because he's been doing Arco for many many years. Yeah. That, in fact, it was where I met him. Like, yeah, 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 sure. I don't uh, know how many years ago. So a long time ago. I, I was trying to buy some, uh, some of his artworks from, for a client. <laughs> and then uh, we, we, we make the deal and then we become friends. So it's, it's nice to, to have Michael um, and follow Michael for all these years. And as well, we have Christian Bertz, which is a very interesting uh, gallerist. And he's got a very interesting gallery. Uh, focus on art brut. Uh, uh, I have to say, uh, I visited his gallery twice in Paris, and I really, really uh, encourage people to go to his gallery. It's a very interesting gallery with a very interesting uh, artist. So, what we are going Thank to you. talk about today is about collecting, uh, how to collect from uh, the best galleries, uh, European galleries, and how to do it as well in art fairs. And we're going to do the focus on on bad on on the, mm. on the art fair in Bordeaux. So first we are going to start with Adrian, and then we carry on with Michael, Christian, and then we and end up with myself. This time I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, and I'm going to present uh, myself and what we are going to do uh, at the at the at the art fair. So Adrian, uh, you have the the time. It's your time. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone, um, happy to meet you. Uh, so my name is Adrienne and uh, I was formerly a director at a, a gallery in Paris uh, called Nathalie Obadia. And uh, before I was a specialist in contemporary art uh, for an auction house uh, called Piazza in Paris too. Uh, and I found in my, uh, uh, my own services uh, one year and a half ago uh, on advisory services, and uh, I joined the, the, the BAD project finally a bit late compared to my dear uh, colleague uh, Christian, Elisa, and, uh, and Michael, because I arrived three months ago. And uh, I would say that I'm more like the Swiss uh, knife of uh, the fair right now, but I'm <laughs> going to tell you more about uh, the origin. So basically, uh, the project was really interesting at the beginning because uh, it was to bring like uh, an, a new art fair in a new city, you know, which is not the, the capital, uh, but uh, which is uh, with uh, an, a very good, uh, uh, um, how do you say, a very good um, uh, notoriety, uh, which is Bordeaux and which is uh, between, you know, Spain also and Paris. So it's a good uh, good city to to meet to meet there. Uh, basically, the, the notion of uh, discovery was very important for us. So uh, we would like to bring like new galleries, uh, not the, the galleries you have to you 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 used to see on the on the the, the, the right the the fair that you 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 should visit all the time. Um, so it's contemporary but also design. Um, and uh, we we try to 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 involve like for this first edition 42 galleries from uh, six or seven countries, um, and we also try to create an ecosystem around the city. So uh, the institution, you know, like the, the city uh, itself is very involved in the project. Uh, so basically, as you know, like the CAPC is the, the oldest uh, uh, center of contemporary art in France and is based in Bordeaux. Uh, we have the FRAC, we have the Musée des Beaux-Arts, of course, and uh, we have also uh, the MAD, which is a decorative uh, art uh, 
um, how do you say, uh, decorate art uh, design museum. So it was very important to, to get everyone on board for this project. And I think is what, is what the, 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 the strength of this project is really that. Um, in addition of that, we, we tried to create a, a very shaped in teller program for uh, to just to, 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 to help collectors and to help new, new collectors to, to see how to collect and uh, how we can uh, help them in this, uh, this new initiative. Uh, so we funded like three, three initiatives. We have uh, the, la the lab, which is uh, um, a place where we have a lot of conferences with curators, uh, uh, art advisor with Elisa, uh, artist. Uh, we have initiative on new project like NFT. Uh, we bring also like a, a lawyer who's gonna talk about the uh, how we how you can uh, collect with your company uh, and use like the fiscality and uh, all the things, uh, all the advantages uh, uh, made in in in, in make. Uh, uh, who are possible in, uh, in, in, in France, actually, in the fiscality. Uh, we have also the, um, um, the lab, the, the interviews program, which is really important, actually, because as you know, like Bordeaux is a, a very nice area uh, with a lot of binards, uh, obviously. So there is a, a lot of visits uh, to, to see like the collection of, uh, of uh, big wine arts in Bordeaux with all their collection and especially their outdoor collection. Uh, so you can visit that uh, obviously and, uh, and basically also like see all the museum. Uh, so basically the, we, we, we would like to mix actually the, the way of life of Bordeaux with the arts. And I think uh, it's a perfect match and combination of, uh, of both, you know? So uh, I really, I would say that it's the initiative is really good and uh, and uh, it's also a way for galleries to 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 take time to 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 talk with people and you are not on a rush of you know a huge fair which is could be the case for Art Basel or Arco. Uh, it's more like I would say in a way more like a familial way. Um, it's pretty much what I can say. Maybe I can say more things on, on uh, do, you, do you want me to show the, the, the slides if you prefer? Yeah, well, uh, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can, uh, Elisa. Thank you. Uh, it will help me actually because to, to just to remind me the order. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, and the idea obviously is to create a rendezvous uh, each year and uh, to bring more galleries uh, next year with new initiative, of course. Um, I can't say what is going to happen for, for the next edition because we're already shaping like a new um, invitation for, for a city, for example, in, in US. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and obviously, yeah, we would like to, to set up this in a, in a long term. <clears throat> so uh, what is really nice, I think, about uh, the fair at Bordeaux is that you have like a really nice city uh, with a very interesting culture uh, um, atmosphere. Uh, you have the, the, the wine and then you have the, the, the art. So I think like it was like the perfect match. So and at the end, the 42 galleries that are going to participate are really good. They are mainly from, from Europe. Okay, Adrian? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is this is true, and I think we have a very good notion of discovery in this edition already. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very good uh, start for us, uh, and uh, obviously we have a, a strong team with a committee, um, which is good to to bring together uh, all the, the the success factor for for uh, the future. So what, what we do is we would like to invite people who, who would like to have uh, uh, spend an, a nice weekend in, in Bordeaux. Uh, yeah, because you, you know, you know what, what I like with Bordeaux is not like a city you only come for a fair, which is very important. 
I think you can enjoy a multifaceted, you know, of the city. Uh, you have obviously the 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 art and the the the, the fair uh, itself, but what is important is to see like all the ecosystem around, uh, which is the case with Paris, for example, because you can see a lot of museum. And what I like is uh, the the size remains humans. You know, you don't have plenty of <laughs> stuff to do, but it enough things to, to, to enjoy like a week there uh, because you can, you can go on the countryside, you can uh, go on the seaside actually. Uh, so basically, you know, you, have, you can spend a, a week there without problem. And this is the really good asset of Bordeaux, I think, for, for the future. And this is why I believe that, you know, this, this city will be, you know, uh, important for for in 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 the art landscape in the future and uh, and it's great to to see. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah no sorry because I I got like so uh, yeah so basically yeah I think it's a very per it's a perfect match for for everyone to discover the city but also to 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 join a fair and to talk with galleries international galleries. So we invite everyone to join us uh, to Bad, the Bad we in, Exactly. We invite you to, to, to come and to visit us, obviously. Uh, so it's going to be from the 7 to, to, to the 10, with an opening on the 7. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a very good initiative. Uh, so do not hesitate to come back to Elisa if you have any question regarding your venue. I think it's a, it's a very great idea. I think for Miguel it's going to be quite difficult because he's in Australia. <laughs> okay, so yeah, <laughs> from Australia, I can, I can, I can imagine it's complicated. But, for but anyway, from your, collect, from your, from your, uh, your, your uh, uh, Spain collector, the, the idea of, uh, you know, like Bordeaux is it's located between Paris and, and, and Madrid, for example, I like this idea. Yeah, definitely. Because it, it was very difficult, I see from, from my past experiences, you know, uh, from the from, uh, gallery director or even, uh, you know, like from, uh, from my auction house experiences, uh, to create a link with, you know, with uh, Spain actually in France. And uh, and I'm happy to to get this city and to create maybe like you know like uh, uh, a point of of meeting for for everyone, which okay. is really easy to come. You know, we are not we are not uh, far away from uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, southwest of France and uh, Bilbao and. Uh, and in, in, in the same way from Paris, it's two hours of train. So it's really easy. And, uh, and Bordeaux is, uh, I mean, it's, it's a good city for that, to meet everyone. So thank you very much, Adrian. Um, uh, we will keep posting everything about the art for those who can come this time and maybe for the next year. And then we give uh, this time, uh, I would like to invite Michael uh, to join us. Uh, so he, he, Michael and, and Christian are the two, one of the two galleries that are presenting the, the proposals in Bad. And uh, I would like Michael to, to explain about his, the artists and his showing. So thank you. You have to sw uh, switch out the, the microphone. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, let me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now yeah. you can hear me, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, welcome everyone to the talk. Um, so I mean, I totally agree with Adrien about uh, Bordeaux, the city and what it has to offer. I think uh, the, uh, the city offers a lot and it's great and has a fantastic potential to have to host a really good art fair. I mean, first edition and in the future. So, and for this edition, I decided to show an international range of the artists. I mean, I run my gallery for a long time, as Elisa explained in the beginning. So um, that means um, I'm around for quite some time. And uh, also some of the artists I'm showing, I'm working with for a long time. So one of the artists I will present, it's an American female from Los Angeles. Her name is Monique Van Genderen, which is the actual exhibition at the gallery right now. 
Um, and uh, so she, at the first show I did like 20 years ago, I used to have a gallery in Los Angeles uh, from 2002 to 2006, seven. And uh, the first show and the gallery in Los Angeles was called The Happy Line. It was in Chinatown, downtown Los Angeles. And the first show with Monique I did in 2002 or 2003 in that gallery. So, and I uh, met her through a uh, recommendation by a nice colleague. He was my neighbor, actually, when I had my gallery in Los Angeles. And we were chit-chatting on a Saturday afternoon, talking about good artists from Los Angeles. And he recommended her. So I visited her, gave her the first show in, well, not in Los Angeles, but first show in my gallery. And this is now the show you're looking at right now is the third solo show I'm doing with her in Berlin. And meanwhile, I organized some museum exhibitions with her in Germany and abroad. So that, uh, and she is working in the abstraction as you can see. And I will show the smaller paintings you can see in the PDF. I will bring some of the smaller paintings to Bordeaux because unfortunately we had to uh, postpone the exhibition here because my other artist, which is supposed to come here now, had problems with his visa. So he's from Indonesia and the visa issue didn't work out in time. So we're keeping this a bit longer. And also the Indonesian artist, his work, I will also present in Bordeaux. So I'm showing like Monique van Gender, an American artist, um, uh, Pico Yabadio, artist from Indonesia. And then we have Margaret Eicher and uh, a Norwegian artist and a Chinese artist based in Berlin. So I'm, and by Margaret Eicher, what we're looking at right now, I'm showing one of the large tapestries, actually the one you're looking at right now, the black and white one. Uh, it's the, called La Città delle Donne based on, a, on the Fellini movie. And Margaret is doing this tapestries, which is based on the Jacquard technique. Um, she is doing her work on the computer. So it's basically a digital collage, which she, in the end, she transfer into the tapestry. And uh, I mean, you will see in Bordeaux in life that they're very stunning, exceptional works. And the tapestry, I mean, right now we cannot see that good. I think that's a tapestry, but you will get the feeling when you come to see my booth at Bordeaux and I'm quite sure you will like it. So the Città della Donna is the one to the left here you're looking at with all the females. And um, yeah, it's, uh, and there, I mean, the, the ones you're seeing here are like the famous female actors from all the superhero, super female movies. So I think you will enjoy looking at her work. And then the next artist, ah, I forgot him actually. The next artist I'm also showing in Bordeaux is Yona Mine. He's an artist from Africa, from Angola. And uh, I haven't done a show with him yet. So the next show in the gallery in September will be uh, a show with him. He is working with my super nice colleague in Lisbon, Christina Guerra. And so I discovered the work at her booth last year in Basel, and I really liked it. And uh, so we met with the artist a few times and discussed the show. And what he, these are collages you're looking at on a newspapers kind of base. And the collages I bring to Bordeaux. And he's working on the political aspect in his city, like take over, like, you know, by China and the influences of various countries. So the work is highly political, but also on a very loose base transformed into various technique and installation, painting and drawing, so to speak. And for the gallery show in September, he will do an entire all over installation. He will take over the entire gallery will work for two weeks in the gallery and do an installation in the gallery with collages, posters, and paintings. So that's him. That's my Norwegian artist, the next one. His name is Anders Kjelvik. And by Anders, I will show some new work which he made here. Um, he's based in Oslo and in Berlin. And he's working in painting and sculpture. Uh, but for Bordeaux, this time I don't bring large paintings. I will bring a series of smaller paintings he made while he was last time visiting in Berlin. So I think that's uh, 
I mean, it's quite, it's a mixture between figuration and abstraction. Um, so, I mean, you will see in Bordeaux. And these are the smaller ones here. These are the works I'm bringing to Bordeaux, the next ones. So it's like, it has an architecture fields. It's always a certain depth and some figurative elements sometimes. But the smaller ones are, I mean, this time, the only one which is available. So I bring the five or six smaller ones. I don't know how many there are. But uh, yeah, so you will see that also in Bordeaux. I think it's quite uh, cool, very colorful also. And it fits, I think, the surrounding and the location Bordeaux with bright light, water surrounded and all of that. So yeah. So let's see, that's my Indonesian artist, which I discovered about 10 years ago when I, after Los Angeles, I'm um, just a little interruption, I kind of opened later on a gallery in Singapore. So I had a gallery in Singapore from 2012 to 2015. And, uh, and I was traveling in the region. And of course I was in Indonesia, which is very close by. And I found him uh, while he had a museum exhibition and a very excellent space in Bandung, which is northeast, I think, of Jakarta. Um, and he had a fantastic museum show at uh, spaces called Selazar Sunario Art Space. And it's founded by uh, one of the uh, most renowned Indonesian artists alive, Selazar Sunario. It's a very nice gentleman. And he dedicated parts of the museum to the younger generation of artists and parts of the museum showing his work. But it's really one of the first really contemporary art institutions museum in Indonesia. And Pico Yabadio, the name of the artist, and he had a solo show in that museum. And I was quite taken by the quality of abstract painting, the mixture, originality, and fun, and all of that. So I did with him a show in 2015 in Berlin, in like the first solo show. And now after COVID, wasn't all easy for everyone also not for the artist uh we're doing the next solo show uh in september the problem we have right now we have to find a space so i'm working on that too because my gallery space is already booked but now we have to see where we can do the exhibition with him at the same time but i will show the drawings you're looking at here in bordeaux so it's a series of 20 25 drawings um based on abstraction and figuration and it's always signed with the artist so the text element in the drawings is quite important for him so, uh, but the problem i have right now is to find the space <laughs> anyway so this next artist is the chinese artist i discovered most recently in berlin and um, she is outstanding in abstraction i think she has this great quality of uh, coming from this inkjet tradition on no, no, ink tradition drawing in China. And you see that in her paintings as well. And the paintings have several layers, which you cannot really see on the images. It's very difficult to photograph. So they have this transparency, translucentness, and you see the, all the layers and it makes a reference to Chinese paintings, European paintings, abstraction. You kind of imagine some figuration in their landscape elements. And also like now you see the abstractions first and the other ones, the more dense paintings also look to my understanding, very, very formal, but they have the same kind of technique. It's kind of layers over layers. And it's not, I mean, what images transfer very well. And I think these colorful ones will might fit very good with the surrounding of Bordeaux, very positive speaking. So I think that's a good choice, like, you know, to bring to Bordeaux as well. This is, ah, I forgot another artist I'm bringing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By him, I bring some uh, works on paper, smaller ones. This was the show I had last year in the gallery. Oh, actually this year, February till April. And uh, Louis Cameron, American artist. And um, uh, I uh, got introduced to him by a funny coincidence. He was one of my first visitors when I opened my new space where I'm right now since for more than a year. 
and he was visiting the gallery with a nice, very nice friend. And we started chit chatting about this and that. And then I followed up on the art he was doing and I really liked it. So he does this collage paintings and they're kind of based on the color coding of the city. So he takes photographs of the colors in the city. And the funny thing is they're all these colors you see all taken in Berlin and the people always asking us like, you know, how can Berlin so colorful? Like, you know, because in the winter is also gray and like, but you find these really cool spots in Berlin where you'll find all the colors. And then he, when he kind of is looking at his photos and, and the colors and he's starting to collage them on canvas. So that's basically the results and they all have certain titles. And I think some of the colors and the walks does walk through the city. And I, there is a very nice short movie on my website. If you have time to look at, and you will see how he does it, how he walks through the city. It's about two minutes long, so it's not. Uh, it's kind of nice to look at. And we also have one on Margaret Eicher as well, which we did for the first show in our new space here in Berlin. So I think that would be helpful for you to understand the work a bit better and how the artist works. That's it, right, Louis? Okay, the last one. Okay, then we have everyone I bring to Bordeaux. That's good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. I think you have a very interesting proposal for for Bordeaux and with your artists. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure that they, they, they will make a really nice selection. And uh, I'm thinking about some people that make like your work. So good. That's really really good. Okay. So now, uh, uh, Christian, uh, are you there? I, I guess yes. Yes, you are. Please, uh, if you can switch on your your microphone. Okay. Thank you very much. And then now we have our colleague from from Paris. Uh, and first of all, I would like uh, Christian to explain a little bit uh, how he started his gallery and why Art Brut, uh, and then to make it the context. And okay, I try to make it short because it's a long story. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a former publisher, so I I wasn't involved in the art world uh, when I used to work before I became a gallerist. And at some point, I discovered Arbrut and started to collect it. And more and more, that was about 30 years ago. And more and more, I became involved uh, with people who collected, who were scholars, writing books. And I, I used to have a, a, a correspondence with Roger Cardinal, which was the, the English guy, art historian, who wrote this book in 72 about outsider art, which is now a famous concept because our Brit is slightly different, but I can explain it later. What's the difference between outsider art and our Brit? But so I started and more and more, I had the feeling there was kind of a scandal and something needed to be done to write this missing page of art history. And this missing page was the, 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 the history of Art Brut. And uh, so uh, when I started to have the idea to found the gallery, it was uh, also not only doing shows, not only promoting artists, but also publishing a lot of books. and. We, I started the gallery 17, 17 years ago, and I published around 100 books about Arbuit, about different artists, about uh, thematic uh, books and catalogs, and uh, invited uh, nearly 80 different people who, for most of them, never wrote a single line about Arbuit. So uh, it's a whole generation now of people who I, I, I had the chance to involve in this reflection about uh, what is happening in this field. So what is this field? In fact, this field is made of geniuses working in total secrecy. And you discover them only by chance, only because someone tells you about them. It, it's not just like in outsider art because they are self-taught, because some of them aren't self-taught. Some of them uh, are quite uh, brilliant uh, people, but had some mental or social issues 
who brought them to express their individual mythologies. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm really interested in this kind of work, and I, I I was seeking for these works and made research all over the world, and so I traveled the world since twenty years to find these artists, and I'm promoting many of them coming from different areas, and the 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 artists I'm bringing to Bordeaux are for most of them quite well-known, uh, like Lubosz Polny. Lubosz Polny is a Czech artist. I don't know if it's the first, I don't know that, uh, if it's the first that, I uh, know that's, so I start with the, the, the Spanish one. Okay, Jose Manuel Echea. He's a young guy, he's about 30, and I discovered him maybe five or six years ago and made al already two solo shows. So, he considers himself as a werewolf, so uh, lycanthrope, <laughs> and uh, he considers all the people he meets and uh, as werewolves. So we have, it's in a way, it's a metaphor to say that we can all transform ourselves in something else. We have an alter ego inside us and we can reveal this alter ego. And uh, he's working in Madrid and uh, and uh, his family had some problems because when he was younger, he used to take all the art books they had in their shelves and uh, try to, to draw on the, 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 the images and the portraits. So uh, they started to give him magazines and, uh, and um, a newspaper. And so he continues to work on newspapers and magazines and sometimes it's, he's just transforming and sometimes he's also writing. He has a very special, maybe on the other page, the next page you can find some, no, there is no writing on those ones, but we will bring, bring some to Bordeaux with writings. And he entered already in the last years in some major uh, contemporary art collections like Laurent Dumas in Paris. And uh, uh, he bought a whole series of his work and, uh, and he, we, he will probably end up in Pompidou, we are discussing, and will be shown, he, he will be one of the major artists that will be shown in the Botanique in Brussels uh, by end of November, uh, with a, the second uh, edition of Photo Brut, the first edition of Photo Brut took place in Arles uh, during the International Rencontre. And uh, the second issue will, will be in Brussels uh, by end of November. And he will, one of the, he will be one of the stars of this edition. So we can continue. Franco Bellucci, who uh, unfortunately there are two artists who passed, passed away quite recently, like Franco Bellucci and Thomas Maschinski. And Franco Bellucci, is, he was Italian and uh, he didn't talk at all. And uh, he was in a mainst mental institution and how he was putting together, uh, tying together objects and toys and things he found around his, the place he lived, he used to live. And, uh, uh, and it's extraordinary poetical what he has done. It, uh, it's, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the surrealist who would have loved his work, I showed him several times and uh, he was also shown in uh, many exhibitions. Uh, maybe you can show the next pages of Franco Bellucci. Yes, that's typical. He liked, he used to like dinosaurs. And uh, so very often you can find dinosaurs in his, uh, in his objects, uh, in his items. And uh, yes, he's, um, okay, and that's a classical. Joseph Hofer, he's still living. He uh, is born in 45. And uh, he, uh, I, I had the chance last year to buy the whole estate. He's still living, but doesn't work anymore. Uh, and I had the chance to buy hundreds of his work. And I'm now um, working on to publish uh, Catalogue Raisonné. Uh, there are about uh, 1,200 works he made during his career. And uh, most of them 
uh, are showing uh, bodies in different ways and struggling to find their place in the frame. And sometimes the frame is uh, gaining more and more space and invading everything. And sometimes the bodies can so jump out and free from the frame. And on the, sometimes you can see on the, the bottom, there are works where he has done his own interpretation of the work by uh, Egon Schiele. And, uh, and he, uh, but it's always a mix because when he discovered the work by Egon Schiele, he's Austrian, like Egon Schiele. And when he discovered his work, what was very interesting is that in the book he looked at, he used to uh, combine two different works in one. So it's not only a reinterpretation, but it's only a combining of different works by Egon Schiele. And uh, yes, he is considered now as a, as a classical. And uh, here on the, on the left, you can see works with his writing. He used to write his nickname, which was Pepe, uh, instead of Joseph. And, uh, and, and Pepe, at the end of his uh, career, uh, is invading the whole space. So we have P and E everywhere. And there is Lubas Palni. It's an artist I, I'm showing him like Joseph Hofer and uh, Bellucci. Um, I show them since about 15 years. So I, the first exhibition in France uh, of Lubos Palni, I did, and also I helped uh, Palni to um, enter the National Museum Centre Pompidou uh, about 10 years ago already. And uh, 2017, he was also chosen to be one of the uh, artists of the Venice Biennale. And uh, so he is doing incredible anatomical drawings. And uh, these are, this is a triptych about more than two meters wide. And uh, he, he um, suffers from schizophrenia. So he has to write uh, very um, precisely every moment. So he has to control space and time. So on each drawing, you can find uh, what he, when and what he did and when he did it and how long it took uh, and for every minute. And, uh, and this, his uh, relation to time is also uh, can be shown because uh, it, you have never titles for the works, but you have figures, numbers, and there is always one figure that you can find all of, on all of the drawings. It's a, a five-figure number, which uh, is the number of days he had when he started and when he finished the drawing. And uh, so it's always the same protocol. It's always the same process. And uh, sometimes you have some elements of collage from anatomical books. And uh, it's, it's, it works when you listen to him, it works like a diary. It's a, in fact, it's a diary, but it's the diary of his body, of his feelings, of uh, the secretions and the fluids that are uh, flowing through him. And uh, it's not like, it's not, he's not talking about uh, feelings. He shows uh, how the body reacts to feelings. And this is Tomas Maszynski. Tomas Maszynski is an incredible story of a Polish uh, mechanic who used to work in a factory. And uh, he uh, was born during the Second World War. And a uh, short time after he was born, his mother died from uh, tuberculosis. And his uh, father died uh, in a concentration camp. And uh, so he. He was an orphan, and uh, <clears throat> he, he was part of a program uh, the West uh, organized after war. And this program um, was in, consisted in involving stars from the movie from the United States and giving money for the uh, orphans of uh, Poland. And 
he was part of this program and at some point he uh there was uh, um, an american uh, um, movie star involved and she sent him a postcard uh, where was written uh with love from your mom and and he thought all his childhood that this movie star was his mom and when he happened to learn when he while he was maybe 17 when he happened to learn that it wasn't the case uh it's like someone denied him the identity on which he built all all his life and so he started to make photos self portraits in which he uh, he become he became all the people imaginable and he made during 15 years in total secrecy because it was difficult it was in a communist country very catholic and oh, sometimes sometimes he dressed in like a woman and he was working in a very uh, modest uh, milieu uh, he, he was a mechanic in a factory so uh, he used all his free time to do these uh, self portraits and he made 25000 self portraits which was it's kind of a polish cindy sherman Really. And uh, he will be shown. He will be shown in Geneva at the Centre d'Art Contemporain at Mamco at the beginning of next year. When I was in in Paris for uh, for the art fair, and you have the, the booth, your booth. Yeah, I did a solo show at Paris Photo, so, and uh, it, it was a huge success because it was nearly sold out. Uh, and uh, he, unfortunately, he had the chance to follow all this, I, I thought I could bring him to Paris. Uh, he never visited Paris, of course, but he was already too weak and uh, he died two months later. So, but uh, it was like, uh, like his, uh, yes, an acne. He, uh, he had the chance to leave what happened in Paris photo during this time. And uh, now he's, it's, it's an, incredible story really an exciting story yes and as i said i had the chance to to visit your booth uh and i was totally impressed with with his work and how you presented as well with the paper uh mm -hmm. it was really really amazing uh for me it was really one of the best booth in, in paris photo i have to say Merci. Merci. No, it's, it's true it's not because you're my friend it's because it's true no, I wouldn't but, say uh, in fact, I, I, I can be grateful because uh, we, we had a, a, a huge press for this show. And, uh, and so uh, it, it was the first time he was really, he was shown to the Parisian public. And uh, so we had no, we thought it was strong, but we had no real expectations. We didn't know it was, uh, yeah. It, 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 we, we, we put it all in <laughs> for Thomas Maszynski. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Christian, for your presentation. You're welcome. Uh, as I said, uh, it's a very interesting uh, artist uh, line of your gallery that uh, you really need to, to explore and to investigate. And, and one of the things I really like about your gallery is when you arrive, just on your left hand, you have all your books published all very well uh, uh -huh. displayed this is your wife work so is so yeah. congratulations she's well. doing all the books yeah yeah okay so uh last uh, but not least uh i am elisa hernanda most of you know me but uh, i'm the ceo of, of red collectors and arte global and i've been doing uh, our advisor uh advisory for the last nearly 20 years and uh, I'm going to join uh, BAT, the art fair. Uh, I will visit with, the, with some collectors. Uh, and other collectors cannot join uh, the fair because they're on holiday because July is not really a very good moment for, for Spain. But uh, definitely they, they want to, to know what's going on in the, on the art fair. Um, and uh, so I think we will enjoy it a lot visit and i'm sure it's going to be not only one time so more time Fabrián. so we'll have more bordeaux more but fair for for many years and so uh, I think I, it, can i just add something please yeah, sure. because uh, uh maybe adrian and you you forgot to say but it's of course it's an exquisite combination 
because of the place, the, the, the beauty of the city and the seaside and everything, and of course the wine and the art, but you forget the food. There are ex excellent restaurants in Bordeaux. The, the, the French cuisine. And in Bordeaux, in Bordeaux especially, they have some, some, uh, some uh, chefs who have three-star three chef from the Michelin. So uh, they are excellent restaurants yeah. over there. Yeah, 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 I agree, I agree. And we have uh, the vineyards, the wine, the, 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 the food, the art, the city, everything. Everything is combined. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, Adriana and myself will be at the Bad Boys, Bad Girls booth, uh, helping people who wants to collect and buy and solving doubts and, and uh, we'll be around. And definitely, um, so I'm going to, to, to invite all people to join. And now, if anyone wants to, uh, if anybody has a question, if not, I have some questions. <laughs> so as before, you can send your, your questions by via the chat uh, if, if you prefer to, to do it. And if not, uh, I will ask Michael. Uh, Michael, what will be your advice for somebody who wants to start a collection? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, you can, I mean, if you come to the fair, I think you have to let yourself guide it first, like, you know, so look around and see what you like and um, what you would like to buy for your house, your home, apartment, whatsoever. Uh, make your own experiences first because it's always like the personal approach and then at the later stage I think but also you can also of course ask you Elisa for advice of course but I think you have to do your own experience with the, the gallery owners the artists which might be present to talk to the people and basically you buy what you like whatever like you know uh, is there uh, so I think that's always a good point for you to, to make a choice, basically. And since it's uh, a very kind of small boutique fair, I think you find some high quality artworks. Uh, yeah, and I would definitely recommend to go to Christian because he's one of the best dealers for artwork and he has fantastic works. Like, guys, ladies and gentlemen, go to Christian Berg and buy... <laughs> his kind of because it's great work i'm really impressed also like Thomas Maczynski showed me the book and it's really outstanding quality and it's like it's fantastic to have such an artist and presented in bordeaux for the first time so i would recommend <laughs> christian <laughs> maybe i can recommend michael johnson to go yes. we recommend yeah. michael johnson as well <laughs> yeah so yeah thank you <laughs> You're coming with an exciting roster of artists. No, yeah. really. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. I'm trying. So let's see how everything will be next week. And if the collectors are convinced, like, you know, by the very variety or whatever program we all show there. Yeah. I, I like that because you have a selection of, of artists from different parts of the world. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you, you can go, like travel around the, the world in mm. your booth. Yeah. Yes. So I like Miguel have a question. First versus Vignale, which one would you say is better platform for discovering and experience new artists? Adrian, what do you think? <laughs> I, I read again. Uh, uh, first or Biennale? Put, put the sound down. Ah. Yeah, the, okay. yeah, first or Biennale, which one would you say is a better platform for discovering and experience new artists? I think it's for me, it's two, two different experiences, especially when you start collecting or where you start visiting, because, you know, you can uh, discover artists on an art fair and then, you know, you have, you can talk with, you know, like the, the dealer of the gallery and uh, they can explain you the process and then you re, re see again in a museum or especially in Venice Biennale. And so you have a better comprehension of the work. Uh, so I think the, the, the fair is uh, maybe like uh, something more specific and you have a different approach on the Biennale because you can see, uh, especially in Venice, you can see many, many things. Uh, 
but maybe more in an uh, institutional way, I would say, because it's more like exhibition. Uh, it's more work exhibited, you know, during uh, especially exhibition like museum forms. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me, but uh, uh, if you are not an initiate in art, I would say that uh, uh, both are different, but uh, it's it's some way different approaches. Uh, but if you want to collect, it, it's really better to start with uh, uh, approaching galleries and uh, and you have to, to do it also with museum. But uh, uh, um, I think that dealers or galleries talk very well about their artists, uh, especially why. And we have two examples here is what I like is the different approaches of Christian and Michael, you know. Uh, they bring a lot of different artists and they explain why they, they, they defend for this artist in particular. Miguel, so you have a better comprehension. Miguel, uh, how was the, the Biennale in Sydney? If you want, you can join us. Because I, I, I just found out that it was just nearly finished now. Yeah, yeah, we just finished it. Um, it, yeah. it was a, it was actually it was a, a, a really different Biennale this time around. Um, they used uh, slightly different venues to the ones that they've they had before, and um, it was really focused on one particular theme, which was the the deer of the river and the river as a um, as an organ that um, that needs to be cared for. Um, um, so it was a, it was actually it was a beautiful it was a beautiful uh, Biennale by by Jose Roca. It was. Um, um, you know, yeah. it just finished. And he's a I mean, curator from Costa Rica. Uh, Colombia, me parece, Colombia. I guess. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but he 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 formed a curatorium with uh, with five um, with five Australian curators. So he he was he was advised by by Australian curators. Um, he had a he had a very strong. Um, uh, in indigenous art presence, uh, which was really, really refreshing to see in in uh, in, in the Sydney uh, Biennale. Um, but um, you know, like like any other Biennale, like, like you know, like like all the Biennales, uh, because it was a, it was a theme um, exhibition. Um, if you if you didn't sort of feel attracted to 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 the theme, then you you know you, you could dismiss it. But the works themselves uh, were absolutely uh, amazing and beautiful. Um, it, I, I think not having the Biennale at Cocotu Island uh, for me was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, Cocotu Island is an amazing industrial, post-industrial um, space, um, and this year they didn't have it there, so it was a little bit disappointing. Um, but there was there was enough going around to um, to be able to engage and explore with. So no, it was fantastic. No, I, I was actually going to ask my follow-up question was going to be: Do do Michael and Christian have any plans to come to Sydney Contemporary? I mean, I know that they're not they're not coming this this time around i think senior contemporary open in a, in a couple of weeks but yeah it's, it's... not for now but we can consider <laughs> yeah, absolutely like you know we definitely can consider never been to australia that i mean never so been, even if i had the guy in singapore so uh, yeah, okay neither do i neither they can come I. to bordeaux i think they can go to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> i love this uh, the whole world <laughs> yeah. in the zoom so thank i'd you. love to yeah definitely Thank you very much, uh, Miguel, for joining us. And, uh, thank you. I, I would like to, to thank you, all of you. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to say, just uh, one minute. Anybody wants feeling like saying something? Not really. I just, I wanted to react to, uh, to your question, how to collect. And it's, okay. it's, it's very difficult to answer, but what I would say is uh, someone who starts to collect, has to allow himself to make some mistakes, but only affordable mistakes. <laughs> voilà. Voilà. This is really true. <laughs> but you, we all do mistakes. I started to collect, and uh, uh, I'm not fond of all the works I used to collect maybe 30 years ago, but yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, it's but the same. We, in, in French, we say, don't buy with your ears, buy with your eyes. <laughs> I like it. Uh, pas, uh, acheter avec les yeux, no, les oreilles. Uh, n'achetez pas avec les oreilles, achetez avec les okay. yeux. Ah, okay. voilà. <laughs> <laughs> J'ai bien ça. <laughs>
This is why I just to come back between Ferris and Biennale, you know, the, the way you, you share with a gallerist, uh, it's better to sometimes to apprehend a work or to apprehend an artist because, you know, Miguel seems to be, I, I don't know you, but you seems to be quite aware of the art world, but uh, for someone who doesn't know anything about art, when you arrive in, in, in a Biennale, it's, it's not easy at all. I mean, for even for me, sometimes you know, to to understand the meaning of the work. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm I'm really balanced between both things, you know, because I like the way of mu mu the museum way. You know, you go to the museum, which is a normal way to see the artwork and to understand. Mm -hmm. Biennale is part of this ecosystem, of course, but in in some way, you know, you can be very. Uh, uh, um, Helped by by gallerists or people aware about an artist to 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 afterwards uh, get a better understanding of uh, what's going on in an exhibition. I totally agree. The galleries are the best ones to know the works. <laughs> so um, thank you very much for everyone uh, for joining us. Uh, when we will have this video ready. We will give it to you and we will launch it. Um, so see you next week in Bordeaux and we will do Chin Chin with the Bordeaux yeah. wine. I definitely <laughs> looking forward for that. <laughs> it's great pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Elisa. Thank, Thank you very you much. So much for Thank you everyone for so, joining. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Hope to see you in Bordeaux. Yes, exactly. See you in Bordeaux. Bye bye. bye.